All right, so I wanted to take a moment to make a quick video to talk about parameters and how you access them with Dynamo on top of Revit. So I just have a model with a single component in it that has a parameter called offset. This parameter lets you offset this thing from the level that it's on. This is a parameter we use quite often for things uh, within Dynamo or the API in general. Uh, if we look at this in Dynamo, we'll see that if I wanted to obtain that parameter value, I can do that with a get parameter value by name node. Uh, this is kind of the typical out of the box way to get parameter values. All you do is pick your element, in this case, the kitchenette, you type in the parameter name offset. Uh, this is case sensitive. So if I were to change it to lowercase, it breaks. Uh, that is one thing to keep in mind. If it's the right parameter name, it just works. Let's go ahead and take a look at this in Revit 2020 now. In Revit 2020, I have the same sample model, the exact same thing. Let's go ahead and select our cabinet and look at something. If I come to my properties dialog, I notice that I don't have a parameter called offset anymore. It's now offset from host. Uh, that is something that I didn't realize was there. Uh, apparently it was in the release notes. Um, but it was something that I just wasn't aware of um, not working with these items quite as much. I had a dynamo graph that used it and then that's when I ran into it. So let's look at that same dynamo graph in Revit 2020. So once again, we select our cabinet or our kitchenette that's selected and we try to get the parameter value by name with the name of offset. This parameter no longer exists on this element, so it just returns a blank. If I type in a type node, we'll actually see that this is in fact a string that it's returning. Uh, so it's a blank string. It's just, it's not even null. It's just a string, a blank string that I'm getting returned to me. Now, this is a problem because if you have workflows that relied on this, it would effectively break them because of that parameter being uh, misnamed. If I were to change this to offset from host, I now get the parameter value. Awesome. This means that you would have to change this in every Dynamo graph that does use that parameter name. You can actually do that in a batch way if you just batch edit your .dyn files with something like Dynamo itself or some other replacement command. So that's very doable if that is something that you wanted to explore. For now, we'll just leave it as offset and then we'll look at something else. So we'll jump back to Revit 19 and we'll minimize Dynamo for now. If I were to select this cabinet or this component, I'm able to look at its properties a little closer, even more than I have accessible in Revit natively. If I go to add-ins, I have a tool called Revit Lookup. This is from the building coder, Jeremy Tamek. He builds this and it's open source, available on GitHub, all that good stuff. And Booster BIM builds an installer for it. Basically what this lets you do is snoop or investigate elements in the Revit database really easily. Uh, so what we could do is snoop current selection. As we can see, I'm looking at this current family instance that I have selected. If we navigate to parameters, we see that we have access to all of the parameters available to us on this element. The one that I'm most interested in, in this specific case, is offset. We can see that the name is in fact offset on that left panel. If you were to go into the properties of the parameter itself, you'll see that we have this option for something called definition. If we click on definition, we get even more properties, like what kind of parameter is it, and things like that. In addition to that, we have something called a built-in parameter. This is the built-in name of that parameter that we can actually use in the API to make modifications to it. This is really special because this would be able to cross language changes, cross parameter name changes, and things like that. So we're going to actually use that. So we'll go ahead and click OK to get back out of this dialog, and we'll open Dynamo back up. So thankfully, Dynamo has a really active open source community uh, of people who build really cool things. Specifically, 
For this example, we can use nodes from a package called Archilab. Archilab has a node to be able to retrieve a built-in parameter's name given a search string. So if I were to hook in my cabinet element, we'll actually remove this get parameter value by name node, and we hook in the name, we'll find that it gets the built-in parameter name that I was seeing earlier. If I were to go back to the Revit lookup, parameters, and we'll go to offset, internal definitions, we can see that it's instance free host offset parameter. So it's actually retrieving that name for me. If I want to use this thing, uh, the easiest way to do that would be to type this into a string node. So I'd want to replace this. Luckily, another custom package, Clockwork, has a node to send data to your clipboard. So I'll just send this parameter name to my current clipboard, remove that. We're going to remove the parameter name node and paste it into this string. So now instead of offset, I have the built-in parameter name. What we can now do is if I tie my element in to the get built-in parameter node from Archilab, I can also tie in the name. Right offhand, we'll see that it's not currently retrieving anything, and that's because this is made to work with lists. If we hover, we'll see that it's expecting lists of elements. For now, we can just modify the levels to force it to think it's a list. And we can see that we are getting a parameter of one. That is the offset of that component. We'll go ahead and save this graph and reopen it in Revit 2020. In 2020, we'll close it and we'll reopen it. And we'll see that that is behaving exactly like I would want it to. Uh, like I said, this is a custom node, but whenever I hard code it to the built-in parameter name, it will stay consistent even across language changes. So you build it in a English version of Revit. If you move to a German version, this parameter would still be the same because that's what it is in the API. Uh, this is really important to keep in mind, especially if you start building like your own add-ins and things like that. Uh, it was something that I just kind of missed. We had some Dynamo graphs that people were starting to run in 2020, and then a few things were breaking without us realizing it. After a little investigation, I realized they changed that parameter name, and I had some changes to make in some Dynamo graphs. Uh, this is interesting as well because in Revit, I'm on Dynamo 2.1, on Revit 2020, and then on Revit 19, I'm on 203. These are compatible Dynamo versions. So when it comes to a Dynamo graph, like this one, for instance, that's just getting a parameter name, I didn't have any expectation that it would break between those two versions. It was a Revit change that triggered this. Just to throw it out there, I do think this parameter name change is a welcome change because as far as I know, you can schedule it and do other things with it. Uh, which is really cool, but it is something that we do need to keep in mind and know of other ways to change it. What I'd really like to see is this built-in parameter methodology working its way into the out-of-the-box nodes, uh, which would be really useful. But there it is, just like a brief discussion on built-in parameters and kind of why they matter to you. Uh, I would say if you have any graphs that use that offset, offset parameter, it's time to go back and give those a little bit of a look and see what's going on, uh, if you have anything breaking as well. Uh, all right, thanks for checking it out.